Hi, Storytime lovers. In today's story, I would like to take you to a place we've never traveled before. What is this story about? Well, we could sum it up as an adventure, a magic necklace, and brotherhood. And I just can't wait to introduce you to Forrest. Forrest is six years old, and he feels lost now that his big brother Kichi is no longer here. He misses him and clings onto a necklace that reminds him of Kichi. This spiritual story is going to take you into the very heart of the Native American spirit. But do you know who Native Americans are? The Native Americans are the indigenous peoples and cultures of the United States. Indigenous people are the first people to live in a land. So yes, there were people who lived in the United States long before the arrival of Christopher Columbus and the Europeans. Native Americans lived in groups called tribes, and each tribe had its own culture, such as their religion, customs, and language. Religions and beliefs were very important to the Native American way of life. It is based on the spiritual belief that everything, living, natural or inanimate has a soul or spirit. The author of today's book is Alana Robson. She is a children's book writer based in West Yorkshire, England. And Kitchy, the Spirit Fox, is her first book. It was released just a few weeks ago. You can buy her book in your local bookshops and you should know that the paperback version is now only six pounds on Amazon for a limited time. And now, let me read to you Kitchy, the Spirit Fox. The roaring red sun shone in the sky. Birds flapped their wings and flew on by. It was a beautiful day right from the start, but little forest had sadness in his heart. He reached into his pocket and he took out a locket. When he looked at the photograph, Forrest couldn't help but laugh. The sadness he had slowly went away when he looked at the photo every day. He missed his big brother more than anything. He missed how they would laugh and sing. Forrest closed the locket and looked at its back. With his little finger, he gave it a tap, tap, tap. The locket shimmered and turned into a map. The glowing roads twisted to become a heart. Forrest knew exactly where he should start. He began walking along the river where a slippy snake started to slither. He was bright yellow with a sharp tongue and a body that was really, really long. How dare you come here? The snake said. Forrest ran away until he bumped his head. He hit the tree branch with a thud and he went tumbling down into a giant pile of mud. The mud was thick and super sticky. Trying to get it off himself was very tricky. He really wished he had a towel. Suddenly, Forrest was visited by a wise owl. The stranger had eyes that were bright and yellow. Mr. Owl turned out to be a rather friendly fellow. The owl led him to the old oak tree. It became so dark that Forrest couldn't see. Slowly, the sky became a big bright glow filled with all the colors of a rainbow. Fireflies wonderfully lit up the night sky. Forrest watched as they fluttered by. He followed them down a path of stone. Forrest was so happy that he wasn't alone. They circled around a wooden totem pole, a tall stick carved with heart and soul. Forrest had seen it before in a book. He moved closer for a better look. 
a beautiful orange fox with fur so bright came out beneath the moonlight. The strange fox was not like any other, for he was wearing the same necklace as his brother. It had been given to Kichi by their mother so they could use it to protect one another. Snap! There was a loud rustling sound. The shock made Forrest fall to the ground. A pack of angry wolves circled the pair. They had sharp teeth and a scary stare. Forrest was scared and began to shake. He simply didn't know what steps to take. He closed his eyes very tight. He really didn't want to fight. The fox walked over to the pack. He growled and readied for attack. The fox was not playing any games. He created a sea of fiery flames. The wolves were frightened and ran away. They were not going to get him today. The flames began to dance and twist underneath a sparkly white mist. The mist made the flames go away. The smart fox had helped him today. Forrest gave the fox a big, big hug, whilst giving his fur a brotherly tug. You have saved me, brother, Forrest said, whilst patting the fox on his head. With you, I will never feel alone. Forrest and the fox then walked back home. His brother may not be here. He'll still be gone year after year. But when Forrest needs him at any minute, he is forever and ever here in spirit. The end. Thank you so much for listening. And now, let's play a little game to help you find out more about Native American culture. So, can you guess the meaning of these Native American symbols? Symbol number one. Does this represent the moon or a boomerang? It's the moon. Symbol number two. Does this symbol represent friends or brothers? It's B, brothers. Now, which of these symbols represents war and friendship? It's first friendship and war. Symbol number four. Does this symbol represent failure or peace? It's peace. Symbol number five. Does this mean happy or sad? It's happy. And symbol number six, which one represents the mountain and which one represents the rain? It's rain and mountain. And before I let you go, you may have been wondering why the totem pole is so important in the story. Well, a totem is a spirit, sacred object, or symbol of a tribe or individual. Some Native American tribes tradition says that each person is connected with nine different animals that will accompany him or her through life, acting as guides. Can you tell me which animals guide forests in this story? Press pause and have a think. Did you find them? Well, number one, a wise owl that leads him to an old oak tree. Number two, fireflies that guide him to the totem pole. And finally, the fox that protects him against the pack of wolves. Well, that's all for today. Don't forget to grab your own copy of Kichi to read over and over again. All the links are in the description box below. Take care, read on, and see you soon.